Yo, isn't it crazy how most people in society who point out stuff in society, like they'll say the government this, the government that, you know, this is wrong, that's wrong. Isn't it crazy how those same people are the same ones who don't want change in society? Ain't that crazy? Why don't we want change in society? People are so used to being comfortable that it's crazy. You know what I'm saying? What they say, uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Then why when it's broken, we don't try to fix it? You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying we gonna fix the world, or save the world, but Jesus Christ, like, don't sit here. It's just like people in relationships. You know what I'm saying? They won't resonate with the person. And I've been there too, so I can't really point fingers, but once you realize what you're doing, and you work on yourself, then you do better next time. You know what I'm saying? But people don't do better next time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, in my situation when I was with a narcissist, it's because I was trauma bonded because my mom was a narcissist. And I didn't really recognize what was going on. But the thing is, when you have somebody telling you what's going on, like some people, they're their friend or whatever will warn them and they still won't get it. Now I'm not blaming them again because, you know, people have their reasons for why they don't want to wake up in society. Which way should I go? That way or that way? Yeah, people have their reasons for why they don't want to wake up in society, but at the end of the day, um, I just don't understand that mentality. And I know it's hard out here for a pimp. So no, I know it's hard out here because um, we've been living like this for years and years. You know what I'm saying? We've been living like this for years and years. And inside of families, you know, generational curses, generational curses of narcissism, generational curses of toxic behavior. And the crazy part to me is they say that, I feel like that's part of the system too. They say that narcissism is such a small percentage of the population. How do you know that? Why are you even putting that statistic out when most narcissists don't go to seek help anyway? You know what I'm saying? So that stat is obviously wrong. That's like, that's like, you know, y'all not calculating gummy worms and y'all just see that there's a bunch of gummy worms that, you know, come into y'all face and you're like, yeah, you know, there's 95% of red gummy worms and 85% of blue gummy worms. But you're not tracking them. How do you know how many gummy worms are out there? You're just talking. You're just putting stuff out there. Like, they should just literally put this... I mean, they should literally just put the fact online. Narcissism in society is unknown. Simple as that. It is unknown. Because it's multiple narcissists within just my family of origin. Multiple narcissists within my ex's family of origin. And people like to say... They get online. I love this. I love this. These these people that's so scared that they might be narcissists or these people that are, uh, you know, love to say to go, go to a psychologist. You're not a psychologist. You're not a doctor. That's the biggest gaslighting I've ever heard in my life. That goes to the street, so I'm gonna go back this way. That's the biggest gaslighting I ever heard in my life. You're not a doctor, you're not a psychologist. Some of these doctors, some of these psychologists are narcissists. Listen, this guy I was talking to, he dated this lady for like 16 years. This lady is a licensed psychologist. Licensed psychologist who deal with personality disorders children. She's a narcissist. He didn't realize that until she, uh, till he started figuring her out and he, she discarded him. But if nobody gonna talk about that, they are gonna say, oh, that's just one incident. It happens all the time. I know somebody that's a dental assistant that's a narcissist. Um, I know my ex was uh, going to school for therapy. I mean, for, uh, for psychology, I meant to say. Um, psychology. She was first gonna be a cop. And then I was like, I was sitting here thinking like, yeah, she's so innocent. But that's the facade they put on to try to pretend like they so innocent. And that's why she was trying to let me know like, yeah, I could be a cop. Cause I can work one of these dudes out here and not care. It ain't in me, I ain't got the empathy. That's why it ain't in her to keep her friends. She don't care about her friends. She would say behind their back and a smile in their face. She would be so illuminated with her friends. Yeah, turn up, turn up. And then around me, she'd be like, she ain't want to have no conversation. Because that's not even a real person. But anyway, 
I just don't understand why, you know. I mean, I understand why society is the way it is, but um, it's just so deep. That that's another reason why people don't want to wake up. That's another reason why people don't want to face the facts. Like me, look, I'm on this this journey myself in life, all by myself. My family's gone. Full of narcissism, scapegoated me, brung me down, or tried to bring me down to the ground. And the thing is, when you scapegoat in society, they don't care if you die. Like I said before in one of my other videos, when you die, all they will do is post you on social media and say, oh yeah, you're the best thing ever, this and that, this and that. Oh, you was this, you was that. And they still gonna slander your name. Like for example, I didn't do nothing to my family. Let's keep it a buck. I didn't do nothing to those people. And um, they sit here lying on me. My ex doing the smear campaign. If you know this woman is disordered, you know she's lying about me online. Why would you go on? Why would you take her side when I'm your brother, your son, your, your sister? Why would you take her side? I mean, you just as disordered as her. Her whole family knows she was disordered. Her aunt sitting here telling, it was so many red flags. Her aunt sitting here telling me, oh yeah, I'm surprised y'all together for this long. We go on vacation. She flirting with some guy at a bar or whatever. And her brother, and she, and she was just like getting on my nerves, but her brother was just like, yeah. You know, her brother was just like, yeah, I've known her for a while. Like it was so many different times where it was red flags. But like I say, I say all that to say, when you in it, you don't get it. But I didn't have somebody blatantly warn, warning me. I've had people in my life where I blatantly warned them like, yo, you dealing with a narc, just straight up. You feel what I'm saying? You're dealing with a, a disordered individual. You know what I'm saying? I've had, or the, the the this friend I know that I'm talking to as well, she's warned people. And it's like, like I said, people love these little cliches. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. But it, when it's broke, why we not trying to fix it? And when I, when I say fix it, I don't mean fix the situation or fix that person. I mean, leave the situation fixing it means like what's your problem what's your issue i'm dealing with blah 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 blah, blah. once you realize there's a point of no return like i was still in my situation because i just thought that eventually this person which is a toxic way of thinking too eventually this person would change or 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 it's not as bad as i think it is when you trauma bond it when your mom is just like this person you just subconsciously assume you subconsciously assume like this isn't that bad, cause I've been dealing with this my whole life. You know what I'm saying? And uh, yeah, we broke up. I broke up with her several times. I broke up with her the last time, but um, and I hurt her apparently. Then she went on TikTok talking about she's gonna get me killed. I mean, got her uncle doing the send somebody for me, and I abused her. He abused me. And then my sister went with her. Think about that. You being a scapegoat when you the scapegoat, it's it's crazy. And then another thing, people wanna. Like I said, people, what people say don't matter, but it's just cracks me up. The people will say, uh, you know, that's still your family. Fuck that. And I don't care if they take this down. Like, fuck that shit. These are insidious. How you going to agree? How you going to agree with some disordered individual who talking that nonsense, yo? And on your own brother. You jealous of your own brother because you not empathetic. You feel what I'm saying? Go get some help. Think about that. Think about that. My whole family teamed up on me. And you know what I did? If it ain't broke, don't, if it's broke, don't fix it. It was broke. You got to leave. When you're the narcissist the scapegoat, you got to leave. Ain't nothing you can do to change these people. They're going to keep trying to bring you down. I end up in a box like my cousin. Now, obviously, my family didn't kill my cousin. But my cousin was destroyed so much mentally for my other cousins all those years. And they using him for whatever the case may be. They using him just for fights when they need to fight like he a dog or something. I've had conversations with him before he died. They treated him like he was not important. And the reason why he was so angry, the reason why he had issues like that. And, 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 and yes, he, he should have got better. But he was trying to get better. But they destroyed him all those years. And then they want to play a pity party. And they want to put him online like he's, oh, yeah, he's a trophy now. Oh, he a trophy now because 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 he died. Just like they did Jesus. 
That's what they do. That's what they do. When you die, you oh yeah, you 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 the goat. And then a, a bunch of people still talking about you, calling you the crazy one and stuff like that. But why was he crazy though? Now, like I said, he it was on him to get better. Like me, I step away from my family and I went to get better. I went to multiple therapists. I talked to life coaches. I worked on myself. I've read books. I went on YouTube. I went on Instagram. I went on Quora. I went on all these websites to work on myself. Not trying to attack my family, bring my family down. Nobody wanted to hear me out because they need help. They need, they need, they need to go to therapy. They need help. Some of them is far gone. They're not going to get better. Some of them don't have empathy. They don't care. My sister straight up said, oh yeah, when people disappear for a day or whatever, I just don't care. They listen, my I had a sister that was adopted. Shout out to her, Kayla. She don't care if I shout her out. But I ain't gonna put nobody else's name in here, but. I had a sister that was adopted. They scapegoated her, got her out of there, lied about her, all that stuff. She was a bad kid, but she wasn't as bad as they made her out to seem to everybody in the family and the family friends. They made her look like the devil. Then they tried to do it to me, and it was like, no, nah, player, I ain't built like that. I'll smack all of y'all. How about that? Yeah, I'm supposed to be compassionate about it. Nah, I ain't get there yet. Fuck that. You entitled to be angry. That's a real human emotion. I'm not out here doing insidious stuff trying to bring down my own blood. Weird stuff, bro. This society is crazy. These generations of, of, of childhood trauma, these generations of narcissism. It gotta stop. And I don't care about y'all dumb people who not who's still in the matrix and y'all probably stuck in y'all families that hate y'all. And if you got a good family, God bless you, that's dope. But not everybody does, and not everything can be fixed with a conversation. You feel what I'm saying? But I say all that just to keep it real, but I, I honestly think on a positive note after saying all that, I'm way better off away from these people, these bugs get them hers. Away from these people because I the one thing is I'm so blessed, and I can honestly say that I'm so blessed that I'm not depressed no more. I was depressed for like most of my life, most of my work life, most of, um just life in general i used to run to my mom like yo i don't know what's going on i was on medication at one point for depression come to find out in this toxic system that's what they want you to do to make money it's just like <clears throat> as soon as i went back to my doctor after my relationship and i was explaining to them what happened and i could barely like you know what i'm saying i was crying and all that <clears throat> and he tried to keep getting me he said medication is is never blah blah all that does is make you zombified I worked on myself, myself. I worked on myself, myself, and I got rid of my depression. <coughs> Excuse me, I got corona. Just working on myself. Just changing my perspective, reading stuff, separating myself from toxic people. I cured my own depression. Trust and believe that, but I think this video going on like 12 minutes. It's your boy Josh Different in the building, mind, body, and soul. Subscribe to my channel. That take me to the street, I'm out.